Hello guys, this is Karthik from ExuteAutomation.com and this is part 15 of our ALM with Team Foundation Server Dev and QA focused video series. And in this part, we're going to talk about creating build definition with vNext build in Team Foundation Server. And as you can see, this is the continuation of part 14 of this video series since we have created the build agent pools and agent queues in that particular video. So it's going to be a complete continuation of that video. So Let's not waste our time and flip to Chrome. So in the last video of this video series, we just created the new agent pool and also the agent queue. And also we talked that this is the place where you can create the build definition using the queues that you have created. So the first and foremost thing which we're going to do is creating the build definition. And as you can see the XAML build definitions that we have created in the part 12 and 13 of this video series. It was pretty straightforward. You just did everything using the Visual Studio itself. But here, we're not going to use the Visual Studio at all since Visual Studio usage using the wizard was kind of a little uh, tricky. And it's not much tricky, of course, but the power of using a lot of stuffs was limited in that particular XAML build definition. Whereas in the new Team Foundations build version, you can see that the build system is completely revamped and it is taken from the ground up and it has addresses a lot of the problems which were faced by the developers so far. And for creating it, you can really do it in the GUI based fashion and it's pretty easy and intuitive. So for that, I'm going to click this plus sign by selecting this uh, build definition and I'm going to click this plus action. And you can see there is a build definition template this time. And it says which kind of build you're going to do. Are you going to deal with the Visual Studio build or are you going to do the Xamarin, Android or the iOS or Xcode, which means you can also do these templates for the Mac OS build agents. So currently I don't have a Mac and also I don't have Xamarin for Android and iOS. So I'm not going to deal with. And as you can see, this VNext is completely cross platform, meaning it's supposed it supports multiple kinds of environments right now. So I'm going to select this Visual Studio this time and I'm going to hit OK. And as you can see that it brings me up a new screen and it has a different kinds of steps available. And you can also add the steps if you want to. And you can see there are a lot of steps. You can also add the utilities. You can add some test and you can see there is a cloud based load testing, cloud based web performance testing or Visual Studio test, Visual Studio test agent deployment, Visual Studio test using test agents or Xamarin test cloud, a lot of features. And also you can use the packages if you want to add. And also you can deploy it in any kind of services which is available. You want to deploy it in Azure cloud service or you want to deploy it in uh, a machine or do you want to do X copy using Windows machine file copy or whatever you want to do. You can do everything using the steps. Everything is pretty much there. Just clicking the add will do everything for you. So I'm not going to go over here in this particular video of this video series. Rather, we're going to talk more about that in upcoming videos of the next video series, maybe. So I'm going to close that. And here you can see that it's looking for the solution. And currently, whichever solution is there, it just picks up. But rather, I'm going to select the solution, which is nothing but our employee application solution. So I'm going to select that and hit OK. And if you want, you can specify the MS build argument here. Of course, I'm not going to give anything here. And the platform is going to be the current platform, which you can also specify if you want to. And the configuration is OK. And if you want to clean the build before uh, starting to build it you can and also there is a restore NuGet packages if you want to you can restore that as well and then there's an advanced option where you can specify the version of Visual Studio and the version of the MS build and everything so currently everything is latest for me so I'm gonna select this and I'm gonna leave this uh, as it is so the advanced is okay for me and the control options so do you want to uh, do you want this option to be enabled or do you want to continue on error or always run all those options you can select it here as well. So uh, this is pretty much fine for me right now. 
and visual studio test do you want to run some kind of test if you want to of course my of course my build has of course my application has some test and if i don't specify anything it will automatically take whichever method has the test in it and it will start running so let that be here so i'm not going to change anything here as well and it says index source and publish symbols so i don't want this of course so i'm going to delete that and publish publish build artifact so where are you going to publish that so let this be here and then i'm going to go over to this option and here you can see there are a lot of options available like multi configuration so continue running other configurations on failure so uh, whichever configurations you want to give are you going to run this particular build parallelly even you can specify that as well so i'm not going to deal with this guy right now and the next thing i'm going to talk about is the most important thing which is nothing but the triggers and this is where the continuous integration kicks in and you can see that if i select this this will say whether build each check-in so if a developer checks in a code then do you want to create a build and do a batch changes of course so you can select that as well or if you want to do a scheduled build so let's say i want to run uh, the particular build definition during a particular schedule of time so you can do that as well so i'm going to do this uh, manual for now so if i do a queue new build it will automatically execute so and I'm, I'm going to leave this unchecked and then let's go to the general and this is where you can specify what are the demands required for this particular build so currently the demand of this particular build is ms test visual studio and vs test so it's all there already if you think your build has some more demands you can add the demand as well if you want to so i don't have any so i'm going to just leave this as well and i'm going to save this and let's give a name for this particular build definition so i'm going to say first ea or maybe employee ea app build def and i'm going to give some comment here first build definition and i'm going to hit ok all right our build definition is created and if you go to the history this is a very interesting uh, tab and this is one of the most requested feature as well and you can see that it has an history and it also says changed by administrator and this is the date and time and the administrator has added this build definition and this is the comment which has been given and let's say if for some reason i go to the trigger and maybe i just select this continuous integration and then if i do a save it will ask me the comment and you can say uh, say here like added ci feature and if i hit ok and now if you go to the history you can see that the new comment is being added so whichever change is done by whom all these changes will be recorded in here and you can see that in the history tab so these are all the greatest features of this particular build definitions in the new build system so what i'm going to do is i'm going to execute this build and see how it works so for that i'm going to hit this q new build and let's queue this build and now you can see that it's asking me the most important thing which is nothing but which queue you're going to select so currently we're not going to use the default rather we're going to use the ea build pool which we just created in our last video of this video series so i'm going to select that I'm not going to give the self set name and let this be the same and the demand is fine whatever demand is there already is still okay and I'm going to hit okay so now you can see that our build has been queued and it says the build not started yet and it's waiting for the queue to be available well once the agent is available 
it will automatically start so you can see that it has got the agent and it's executing it's looking more familiar for you guys if you are working with the PowerShell this is pretty much the PowerShell window that you are seeing here so it's executing it's pretty much real-time and you can see what our action has been performing so it's running the task starting the build solutions and it also runs everything for you and you can also see what's been happening so get the source building the solutions testing the assemblies and publishing the artifacts in the drop folder so our test should fail all right as expected the test got failed and it's publishing the artifact in the drop folder all right so the build failed that's okay we know that it's going to fail because i intentionally made this to fail and you can see that the artifact is available for us in this particular folder location so if i just copy this path and if i navigate to this particular location you can see that our employee application is available here and it has the all the assemblies you can see here and the employee test and also the pf service so everything is available for us in the artifacts folder and you can see the work folder so this is the file which is created all right so this is how you can create a very very simple build definition using the vnext or the new build definition system which is available in team foundation server 2015 so you can see the test result as well so uh, let's say if I want to see the test result, then you can just go to this uh, test tab. And you just go to the runs. And here comes your test runs, which has happened. So uh, it has completed. All right, and you can see that one test case got failed and five test cases got passed. So totally it has executed six test cases. And here is the result. So actually we'll talk more about this uh, testing stuffs in upcoming videos of this video series. So don't worry about it yet. Uh, this is how you can actually see uh, the test results. So this, it's, this is just a heads up that I'm giving you and you can see all the results here. All right, so that's it guys. This is how you can create uh, the build definitions in the new build system and also you can execute the build using the new build system. So thank you very much for watching this video and have a great day.